Jess, hey, how's it going? Hey, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, good. I want to talk to you about the girl before, yeah. as you are the titular girl before. <laughs> in the, I, I don't think I've ever seen a series like this. I was yeah. like, I'm like white knuckle. Like I'm gripping the entire time. It's funny. It's sexy. It's unsettling. It's weird. It's different. I'm the only, my closest comparison, I think, is yeah. there was a show um, uh, about a year ago on Netflix called Behind Her Eyes. Yes, was, yes, yes, yes. That's sort of the closest I could come, but that was, you know, its own thing. How would you describe this show? Oh, I mean, 100%. There are loads of layers in The Girl Before, which is what I think makes it such an interesting watch. It's an adaptation of a best-selling novel of the same title written by J.P. Delaney. Um, and yeah, I think... It, it, it centers around two females, Jane, played by Gugu Mbatha-Raw and Emma, myself, um, that move into this house um, uh, created by the architect Edward Monkford, played by David Oyelowo. And um, both women share, uh, I guess, that they have come from a place of pain and trauma and both are looking to kind of you know, like rediscover themselves in this house and potentially change. Um, however, not as all as it seems, not to give too much away. Yeah, Ben Hardy is also with it. He plays Emma's um, boyfriend, Simon, who move into the house. And, and yeah, lo lo loads of twists and turns that will keep the audience on the edge of their seat. I think, yeah, like pain and, and survival and... Um, yeah, love, jealousy, loads of different layers. And I enjoyed seeing uh, a small cast and you are phenomenal in this, by the way. What's it like working with David? I mean, it's a very different role for him, working with Ben. And, you know, you don't have a lot of scenes with Gugu, but, you know, you get a little bit of an interaction and it feels like you're almost acting opposite each other, not on the series. So what was it like working with them? I mean, you know, finding out that I was going to be doing this show with, with these guys was mind blowing for me. It was huge. It was like serious, pinch me. I remember the day before we started shooting, looking at myself in the mirror, like, you've got this, you've got this, Jess, you've earned your place here. Um, but yeah, I, I learned so much in the three months we recorded in, in Bristol. And yeah, you're right. I didn't have any like talking scenes with Gugu, but like I saw her pretty much every day. And it was so strange because I don't necessarily feel like we look that alike, but in costume, like seeing her, it, it was freaky. It was like, oh my God, that's me. Like it was, it was, so it was her birthday um, whilst we were shooting and people were coming up to me, wishing me a happy birthday. <laughs> That's how my dream looked like. Even my daughter, when she watched the trailer, she was confused as to which one was her mum. But yeah, um, and yeah, working with, with David, just a complete dream come true. And, and Ben is awesome and incredible. I think what I really liked about um, the, the whole process was that the, the, it was a small cast, so it felt very tight knit and quite family like. Um, so yeah, it was it was great. I learned loads. I was gonna say the same that I don't think that you look like her. And then in the show, and certainly plays off of that too. I mean, you have one scene where I think you're even looking in the mirror together. It, yeah. You're her reflection in the mirror, but did did you not shoot that together? Was that after the fact? No, so we we the the one shot that we were side by side. No, 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 no. There was there was a no, 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 no. Yeah, there was a couple. So the first scene, you see um, us walking into one Folgate Street together. Mm. Um, that we are on set at the same time. And then there's another point. Um, I can't remember the episode where Jane is looking out of the window um, into the garden, and she sees Emma. Um, that scene we did side by side, but all the other scenes, like the bathroom scenes and stuff like that, we did separately and just with 
trickery of camera and technology mm. kind of piece it all together. <laughs> so I have to ask from one full gauge screen, and I mean, it's a big part of the series, the house, the house is incredible. I don't think I've seen a house like this, such a, um, a, a wonder, but at the yeah. same time, it's, it's, it's kind of a monolith, you know, there's so much marble and steel and, and at one point it, later on, you, I think you might have the best line of, of the show where you say, fuck you house. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's a little of, it's, it's a lot, it's a little, but then also that you filmed it in Bristol or just outside of Bristol. So I'm thinking yeah. Bristol cream, the, 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 the studio is actually the former winery as well too. So what's it like shooting a show like this? Oh my God. So it was a set, but how it was built. So quite often you'll have you know a house on a set and the rooms will be completely separate but this was very much as you see it where the stairs were led you to a real upstairs which we wasn't allowed to climb up by the way mm. but every time you see a character like anyone walking up the stairs they've um erased out the harness that we had to wear we were mm. we were allowed up to step three before we got shouted at and told to come back down um but yeah i mean the house is just is just unreal. It speaks for itself. It's its own character. My reaction to first seeing it is probably really similar to Emma's first reaction. I mean, I remember when I got the script and I tried to, to picture what it would look like. Um, and and yeah, the reality exceeded anything that, that I had in my imagination. Um, and yeah, I, 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 I feel like I personally grew quite attached to the set you know we we shot the majority of the, the stuff that we had to do for the girl before in the house um so much so uh when it came to finishing shooting in the house um i, I cried <laughs> i got really upset i felt like i was saying goodbye to my friend it was you know I, I, really similar to how emma felt just you know this this a place of safety it was the place you know it, it was the hub for the, the whole um, production where, you know, I, I just, yeah, felt felt safe and, um, but yeah, the house was unreal. Although I'm not sure I could live in it. Yeah, I was gonna say, would you wanna live in a house like this? Oh, I don't know. It was really cold as well, may I just say. So so it was, it's in this huge studio and there's like no heaters other than the little portable ones. Um, so many times you'll see me and I will have like, three pairs of thermals on and heat packs and like running back off set to get a hot water bottle because it was so cold. Um, I, I'm cold all the time, by the way. Mm. Um, but, but, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like I could holiday there if there was heating, but could I live there? I think I, I just need more stuff. I need it. I need it to feel slightly more homely mm. as much as I don't like mess. I say that as I'm looking around my house. Um, I, yeah, I just, I need a bit more home comforts for me. Mm. It, yeah. Minimalist, maybe you're more maximalist, like more Ooh, things. Yeah, I, maybe somewhere in between. So what's interesting to me about this show is that you think of it primarily maybe as more of a masculine show, but I was amazed to see and, and happy to see that you had a female director and yeah. the same for every episode. It felt very feminine. And, and again, in this genre, I don't know if we've seen a show like this that has that with a female gaze to it. What did that feel like for you? How much did you enjoy that? I mean, Lisa was incredible from, you know, before we um, started shooting, we worked really closely over FaceTime and WhatsApp and Zoom, just getting to know each other so much so that it felt like, you know, she she was my director, but she was also my friend. Like I, I just felt so safe with her. Um, not only was her direction fantastic, like she would also trust me to to bring whatever I had an idea for for Emma um and yeah it was it was really collaborative and yeah she she would wear this pink long jacket as I said it was very cold in there she had this pink long puffer jacket and we all called her the lady in pink <laughs> um but yeah I mean yeah the energy that she brought she was she was the the cherry on the cake of the whole production she made it what it is and yeah she's fantastic 
I feel like I need to give you the chance. What did you enjoy most about filming? What are some of those key scenes or key moments for you that you really enjoy? Oh, oh my goodness. I mean, where to start? I remember the first scene that I actually shot um, was all the, the, the therapy scenes that you see Emma with her therapist. Um, so, so the last time that the audience see, this isn't a spoiler, but the last time that the audience see Emma um, in the show is when she's having a conversation with her therapist. And I shot that on my first day. Oh. <laughs> I know, right? Um, but, but yeah, I think, I, I, yeah, I, I will never forget the first day, just like, you know, the anticipation that was built up for, you know, like realizing that I was going to be a part of this, this, this project with the script that I, you know, was obsessed with, with a, a cast that was just as incredible. And um, yeah, that, that first day I, I will never forget. And then all the way through, there was just so many moments for me. I think, you know, um, scenes that uh, were maybe I had to dig a little deeper in and, um, you know, at the end of the day felt like, oh, you know, I, I really, I'm really proud that I managed to, you know, dig as deep as I did and, you know, bring what I needed to for Emma, that there's days like that, but then even days where the scenes were super simple and short or, or, or fun, like every scene, you know, I, I can't put them next to each other and say which one was better, which one mm. was not. I think um, playing a character as, as, as heavy as Emma, what was important for me um, was that, you know, when the camera stopped rolling, I could snap out of that just to protect myself. And it made it so easy with a cast and crew that were as friendly and, um, you know, supportive as, as what we had. I feel like, um, I don't know if this is a cop out as an answer, but just every day was, mm. was a joy to, to be on set, especially at the time, because, you know, the, the UK was in its third lockdown. Mm. So there was a lot of people that weren't allowed to, you know, mingle with other people and go see their friends and family. So yeah, it felt, felt really special. So what has been that for you? What has inspired you? You know, have there been shows? Have there been people that have, you know, brought you here along the, along the way on this journey? Um, I feel like, so I'm, I'm 29 years old. I mm. feel like, um, you know, I, I grew up, left school, kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to do, knew that I loved to perform, like from as long as I can remember, I would you know, put on shows and, and um, you know, sing or dance, not very good at dancing, but I would still do it because I just love to perform. And um, yeah, sometimes I sit back and I think I've lived so many lives because mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. I tried to go to college quite a few times and I realized this is just not for me. I worked loads of kind of retail waitressing jobs. I then went on to um, identity drama school, mm. started my acting career um, and then like complete gear change, entered the music industry with... Um, a girl band that I was in called Neon Jungle mm -hmm. and like traveled the world for, for three crazy years. And then I stopped, I, I had um, my baby, I mm -hmm. went traveling, took some time out and I came back to acting. And I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like all of that, not necessarily like, you know, actors or, or shows or whatever. I mean, there's definitely like, like for example, Titanic, I'm completely, mm obsessed with like I have the script I've read everything that is you know the making of the, the film other stories like real life stories with Titanic but I think my real influences are just like the life you know mm. like the process that I've been on like you know you know like going to college realizing that it wasn't for me um you know just wanting to pursue my my dreams and aspirations of wanting to just perform and, and give myself and um and 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 yeah and kind of like you know I feel really privileged to be able to say that I was able to um 
kind of dip my toe in quite a lot of ponds or whatever the expression is to be able to say I know exactly what it is that I want and I'm going to make it happen rather than living with a like what if kind of thing so yeah <laughs> that's amazing so tell me about this project in terms of you know I was reading about how Google maybe recruited David a little bit said try something out a bit differently for you yeah. it just feels like it perfect role. You know, how does that feel like for you? How does this feel like sort of the project that in a way is kind of introducing you to the world? Yeah. So I got the audition, um, read it, fell in love, saw the people that were really attached. And as much as I'm not going to lie, I did also think this is the perfect fit. Like this is everything that I want to do. Um, did also think I'm not going to get it. <laughs> it's mm. just, it's too perfect. It, it would, it's just, it's, it's a stretch too far. Like I, I, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. I'm sure, you know, like hundreds of people probably went up for the role, but I, you know, I just get, gave it my, my all, I guess. And, um, and yeah, I, I just, I feel incredibly lucky and incredibly proud. What do you think is the best way for people to watch? Do you think they should dive right in? Do you think they should wait on one episode at a time? What's You're a viewer's guide? Most impatient person uh -huh. in the world. Like I will sit there and watch a full series in one night. And I feel like, as you touched on earlier, like visually watching the girl before, it it, it does have a different feel to it. That is quite mm -hmm. different from like other like typical kind of BBC dramas. It, it has like a movie kind of feel to it. Um, it's just a four hour movie. Um, my advice personally would be to sit there and watch all four because you cannot possibly wait to know what's going to happen next longer than, you know, a second. So, <laughs> yeah. but if you have more patience, then you can eke it out. But yeah, I, I would sit down and watch all of that. I remember when we got the episodes back after they had been edited. And so I had to wait like, uh, like weeks in between each one and it just burnt me. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I'm biased in my answer. <laughs> you definitely seem to be somebody that music plays a big role in your life. What mm -hmm. have been some of the, the songs or the artists that have inspired you lately? Lately? Well, do you know what? It's funny that you say that because music played such a big part in my process for preparing for Emma. Mm. Um, I worked with this phenomenal acting coach called Giles Foreman before we started shooting. And he gave me this um, technique, which is basically to um, essentially assign a piece of music for Emma's emotions. So, you know, she would feel happy and that would be the song that I would sit there and learn my lines to with it in my headphones. Um, she would feel, you know, guilt or ashamed or, you, you know, the spectrum of different emotions. And that is the song that I would assign. I would sit there and I'd learn my lines to it. When I was rehearsing, I would have the music in my ear. And then on set, on the day when it came to shooting, I'd play that song. Um, you know, in the morning and even just before we're about to roll and in between takes, I would I would play it to kind of emotionally help me access those feelings because I associated the, the music with the scene so heavily, it, it brought it up quite quickly. I don't know about you, but music mm -hmm. has such an effect on me, like depending on, you know, be it the lyrics or just like the sound of the different instruments that are being played, like it... I can listen to a piece of music and, and just cry for like, and there doesn't even need to be lyrics in it. Mm. Um, so yeah, music played a, a huge, huge part um, in the process. I'm trying to think of one of the, one of Emma's um, songs. I don't, I don't know if I can give it away. I feel quite protective. Over yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but what I will say is just like my musical influences over the years, I mean, you know, I'm a 90s baby, like Jennifer Lopez, Mariah Carey, Shakira, Christina Aguilera, um, the Spice Girls, mm. um, music like that, really. Although right now, 
my daughter like all she wants to listen to is Encanto soundtrack so that ah, is like, yeah <laughs> that is like what I'm listening to every morning through to the evening <laughs> it's been such a pleasure hearing from you and talking to you about the show and I just feel like it's so amazing to see a show like this and to see you in a show like this is so good and it was so much fun hearing you talk about it thank you so much thank you so much for having me